our treatment of people must begin with mercy and compassion. And that's not easy. Well, with your Bibles in Luke chapter 6, we are in lesson number 6 of our series titled, This is Love. And we're using the sermon here that Jesus is teaching in Luke chapter 6 to teach us what it means to love. Because Jesus here is teaching on love, and in particular, he's teaching us how to love our enemies, how to love those who are difficult to love. And so in verse number 20, he says, But I say unto you, which hear, love your enemies, do good to them which hate you, bless them that curse you, pray for them which despitefully use you, and to him that smites thee on the one cheek, offer also the other. And to him that taketh away thy cloak, forbid not to take away thy coat also. Give to every man that asks of thee, and of him that taketh away thy goods, ask them not again. And as ye would that men would do unto you, and as ye would that men would do, should do to you, do ye also to them likewise. For if you love them, which love you, what thanks have ye? For sinners also love those that love them. If you do good to them, which do good to you, what thanks have ye? For sinners also do the same. And if you lend to them, of whom you hope to receive, what thanks have ye? For sinners also lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love ye your enemies, and do good, and lend hoping for nothing again, and your reward shall be great, and you shall be the children of the highest, for he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. Be ye therefore merciful as your Father is merciful. Judge not, and you shall not be judged. Condemn not, and you shall not be condemned. Forgive, and you shall be forgiven. Give, and it shall be given unto you good measure, pressed down and shaken together and running over, shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that you meet with all, it should be measured to you again. I've shared with you as a church that it's my desire uh, that we would be able to demonstrate the love of Christ. And so the intent of this series has been for us to understand that love, to understand the love of Christ, the love that he has for us and the love that he desires for us to have for others. The purpose has been for us to walk in love, to live a life of love, to conduct ourselves in love, to progress through life in love, and to take advantage of every opportunity to love. And the goal has been to manifest the love of God. And so the objective and what we've been doing week by week is trying to shape our attitude and our actions. And I'm just going to go very quickly through the review tonight to get into the, uh, where we left off. But we said that love is when you love your enemies, when you can pray for those uh, and treat people correctly who are in opposition to you or even hostile to you. We said that love is not only when we love our enemies, but love is giving. When we can give unselfishly, sacrificially, and generously. Love is just. That is when we treat people in a righteous way. And then last week, we learned that love is kind. Love is kind. And we said to be kind means to be mild. It means to be helpful. And it means to be benevolent. And I wanted, uh, we're mild in particular when someone was not mild to us. So it's a response. Kindness is a response to be helpful and to be benevolent. And we ended uh, last week talking about what it means to be benevolent. And I gave you an A of being a C. I said that God wants us to be charitable. That is to give uh, and to be generous to those situations where there's a need. God wants us to be tolerant. And God wants us to be caring. And I made the statement that God wants us to be tolerant to those uh, who we may not agree with or those who may not agree with us. And before I go into the subtitle for tonight, just want to double back 
to that for just a minute because I think for many of us as Christians, one of the aspects we struggle with as it relates to kindness is tolerance. One of the aspects we struggle with as it relates to kindness is tolerance. Tolerance is not acceptance. Tolerance is being kind to someone who has an opposing view than what you have. Tolerance is being kind to someone for whom you don't agree. And I get the sense sometimes that as Christians, we feel like if we are kind to someone we disagree with, that somehow we're not being Christians. That if a person is living a lifestyle or they're engaged in activities or behaviors that we feel are contrary, that we feel are contrary to the word of God or the will of God, that if we are somehow kind to that person, that somehow we are, that we're now outside of the will of God or that we've accepted their behavior, or we've accepted their conduct, or we've said that what they're doing or how they're living is okay. Those two things don't have anything to do with each other. Those two things don't have anything to do with each other. We, we can, listen, we can be kind with someone we don't agree with. We can be kind, by the way, uh, we can be kind because one of the things we have to remember is that righteousness is God's will, not your will. It's God's will. We, we, we act like righteousness is our will. And when someone is unright, uh, not right, that they're not right with us. They're, they're not right with God. They're not right with God. And we can be kind to people we don't agree with. We, we can't, listen, if we can't be kind to people that we don't agree with, we're no different than what we're seeing on the news. We're no different than what we're seeing on the news. You know, everybody that you're seeing on the news in this conflict that's going on uh, across the sea, they're related. They're, they're not foreign people in the sense that the way that you would think. The, the, the country borders don't really... Uh, mean as much as you think they mean. Everyone in that region is related to everyone else in one way or another. There are people who live in all of those countries who have family members who live in all of those countries, but yet they are at war with one another and they're killing one another because they don't agree. And as Christians, we war against the adversary. We war against sin. We want to get it out of our lives. But we're not called to be at war with people. And a lot of Christianity has become about culture wars and cancel wars and these type of and, and you need to put that uniform down. Amen. We are in the army of the Lord, but the Bible clearly tells us we don't wrestle with flesh and blood. Amen. We, we don't wrestle with flesh and blood. And people say, you know, I, my, my so-and-so and my family, they, they're doing X, Y, and Z, or they're dating this, that, and the other, and I just don't know how, I just don't know what I'm supposed to do. Be kind. Just be a Christian. I don't understand that you don't understand what to do. I don't understand that you don't understand how to treat them. You just be kind. You be loving. You be tenderhearted. That's how Christ was toward you. You show compassion. You're not accepting what may be unacceptable, but an action is not a person. It's an action. A lifestyle is not a person. It's a lifestyle. Actions and lifestyles change all of the time. Didn't yours? So we just treat people with kindness, with respect, with human decency. How do we talk to them? Like people talk to people. Well, I, it's some subjects I just don't know how to broach. Then don't broach it. There's a lot to talk about without talking about what you don't know what to talk about. Now, when we get a little bit further tonight, this ties in. That's why I wanted to stop and come back to it. But this ties in to, to a little bit. Listen, um, you, you don't have to agree with something, uh, but you should at least put forth the effort to understand where a person is and why they're there. It's not, well, if I do that, then they're going to think it's all right. 
Listen, let God be God. Take some pressure off yourself. Be a human. See, the problem is you're trying to be God instead of letting God be God and just having a human relationship with another human being. Some of the, listen, some of the kindest people to me personally are people who would not know Jesus if I brought, them, brought him to them and they saw the nails, saw the crown, they would say, what happened to you? But they are extremely kind to me and I am kind to them. And they do things I don't agree with. I, I know people, uh, it, you know, I'm gonna share something with you, maybe shocking. Y'all not the only people I know. It's easy for you to say, Pastor, you in the church hall. Y'all not the only people I know. And a, ma and a matter of fact, I don't know most of you outside of these four walls. And so when I'm outside of these four walls, I know people just like you do. I know people that drink. Pastor. You, well, you know people who drink, don't you? Is there anybody in here who don't know anybody who drinks? Okay, so there we go. I, don't, I didn't see a hand. We all know somebody who drinks. Okay? I know people who bring me alcohol as a gift because they, they don't, you know, that's what they do. And I say, oh, they said, oh, that's right. I forgot you don't drink. I'll go get you the non-alcoholic one. That's who they are. That's what they do. But I'm kind to them, and they're kind to me. And guess what? You can witness when you're kind. You can't witness it when you're unkind. Kindness gives us an opportunity to witness. Kindness gives us an opportunity for a person to share what they think, but kindness also gives you an opportunity to share what you think. Kindness gives you an opportunity to learn from somebody else. But here's the part that's important for you. Kindness gives you an opportunity for somebody to learn from you. See, because you know learning whatever they're going to tell you is not going to change you, right? But if they can learn what you know, it can change them. So we want to be kind. Amen? And we can be kind. And don't let the times that we're living in cause you to be something other than what God is creating you to be. Because the times are telling us that we cannot be kind unless we agree. But that's not what God said. Amen? That's not what God said, all right? So let, now, the reason I wanted to, one, I rushed through that last week, but two, it's going to tie into tonight. So love is not only kind, but love is merciful. Love is merciful. Now, we're going to have a lot of connecting knowledge tonight between the Sunday message on understanding the love of God, because in understanding the love of God, we talked about compassion. And mercy and compassion are really synonymous. Mercy and compassion are really synonymous. When you look up compassion, you'll see the word mercy. And when you look up mercy, you'll see the word compassion. And oftentimes, when you see the word mercy in the Bible, it is, it translates to our modern English word, compassion. They are really synonymous. Uh, we tend to think of uh, compassion as the action of mercy. That when I, that, in other words, because I have mercy, I do something. That's compassionate. But they're really synonymous one to another. Does that, does that make sense to everybody? So as I'm talking about mercy, there's no need for me to, to define it any differently than how I defined compassion on Sunday because they're really literally, biblically, the same word, okay? So uh, Jesus, as we know, uh, is, was, I like the way I wrote this, was and is merciful toward us. Jesus was and is. Well, I'll just make it personal. Maybe some of you don't need his mercy anymore. But Jesus was and is merciful to me. And he desires that we would be merciful to others. Now remember the context of this scripture where Jesus says, be ye therefore merciful as your father also is merciful. 
verse 35 says, but love your enemies and do good to them that lend, hoping for nothing again, and your reward shall be great, uh, and you shall be called children of the highest, for he is kind to the unthankful and to the evil. Be ye therefore merciful. See, but love your enemies. Then he goes through a uh, scenario, and then he says, be ye therefore merciful. To whom? Your enemies. Remember, so this, it's so important to remember that Jesus here is teaching us in a context. And he's teaching us as it relates to those who are difficult to love, those who are uh, uh, hard to love, those who may be in opposition to us, and those who may even be hostile toward us. He's telling us that we can be merciful even as our Father was merciful to us because he gave us Jesus, hoping, uh, expecting nothing in return. Just whosoever would believe on it. We were enemies of the cross. He did good toward us. Amen. And so if he could be merciful, then we can be merciful. Our treatment, and this is from the Sunday message, I'm just carrying it over. Our treatment of people must begin with mercy and compassion. Our treatment of people must begin with mercy and compassion. And that's not easy. That's not easy. Just like kindness is not easy. You know, these are, these are very simple words that we were taught it from growing up at the beginning of time that we ought to do and we ought to be, but it's not easy. It's not easy uh, to begin with mercy and compassion, especially when you think you know what happened, you know what's going on, you know what they did, you know what they said, you know what they meant, you know what's in their heart. It's, it's hard to begin with mercy and compassion because human nature oftentimes wants to start past mercy and compassion. But our, our interactions need to begin with mercy and compassion. Now, just like kindness, mercy and compassion are not always received, and mercy and compassion is not always recognized as you being merciful or you being compassionate. So as a Christian, I need to understand it's not, it's not about what the receiver thinks. It's about what is in my heart concerning the receiver, because there are going to be times when we are uh, merciful and it's not going to be received as merciful. You know, uh, it's funny, uh, as, your, you know, as your children age, you have different conversations. And one of the things that happens as your children age is they talk about the horrible, terrible things that you did to them when they were children. Amen. And of course, all of us being children, we know that once we got to a certain age and we felt the statute of limitations was up, we talked to mama and daddy about the beating we got that we didn't deserve, the time we were punished, and it was the other sibling. You know, you, you, you feel that there's a need to go back and revisit the, the wrongs, the errors, and try to, and try to uh, pointlessly, you know, because you've already served a sentence, so it's not like it's going to be expunged, and it's not, it's not like you're going to be acquitted. You know, I'm, I've never had one of these conversations, and, and at the end, my wife and I say to our children, you know, we take it back. Matter of fact, they usually end with, if we were wrong, then that would can just be for one we missed. Because we know, right, because we know, right, to which there's never a good response to that. But, but, my, but my, point, my point is, uh, we were having one of these conversations, and one of my children said, it was not till we got older that we realized that all of these times when we thought you all were angry with us, you really weren't angry with us because I, we saw you dis I saw you discipline my sibling, and then I watched you all go back in another room and start laughing. Because <laughs> what the child did was really funny. Now, I can't remember what they did. They probably remember what they did and why they got spanking and all of those. I don't, you know, after about, the, you know, I've got three children. I done swung so much I can't remember all of those types of things now. Amen. And, what you going to do? You can't call social services on me now. They're all on their own. Amen? So I can, I, can, I can come clean. I lit them children up like Christmas trees. Okay? Now. All right. Now. 
Now, to, to my children, there are times where they thought that we were not merciful. But if they had known what we wanted to do, they would know that we were rich in mercy, that our mercies were new every morning, amen, and that great was our faithfulness towards them. But, but because they don't know what we wanted to do, they think y'all were just being mean. But no, 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 we were being merciful. I mean, great mercy, loving kindness, tender mercy. See? Same thing for you with your parents who you thought was terrible, horrible, and couldn't wait till you left the house. Then you get a little time under you and realize they were merciful, especially when you start seeing how other people turned out. You realize that your parents were rich in mercy. And so when we're going to be compassionate towards people. We're going to show mercy to people, but it's not always going to be received. And it's not always going to be recognized. That's why your heart has to be right. Otherwise, you'll, do, you'll show mercy one time or you'll show compassion one time, and then you'll just, you'll, I'm never going to do that again. Well, you're not doing it based for the person's response. You're doing it uh, so that your reward can be great in heaven. Amen? So, on Sunday, a few weeks back, uh, we, we, re we learned some things about compassion, or we learned some things about mercy, because they're interchangeable. We said uh, that when you have mercy or when you have compassion, you have sympathy. You can be touched. This is just a reminder. We said that when you have mercy or compassion, um, you can be helpful. And we said that when you have mercy or when you have compassion, you can be forgiving. Those were our A, Bs, and Cs under that point on Sunday, that you could have sympathy, that is, you could be touched. We talked about the difference between sympathy and empathy. Uh, empathy uh, means I feel for you. Sympathy means I can be touched. I'm going to allow your experience to affect me on the inside. We said I can be helpful and I can be forgiving. So what we want to do now is sort of dig in a little bit deeper with the message tonight and we want to kind of look at how we do that. H how do we show that mercy? And so uh, this is love. Here's your point number one. This is love when we are understanding. This is love when we are understanding. To be merciful, I must be understanding. To be merciful, I must be understanding. It's not easy to be understanding. It takes effort. It takes work. It is far easier to just say, I don't understand. I don't understand how young people today. I don't understand how old folk today. I don't understand how white folk today. I don't understand how, but it is easier to not try to understand. But if I don't have any understanding, I also will not have any mercy. If I don't have any understanding, I'm also not going to have I just don't understand how they can drink their life away. It's, it's, it's going to be hard to have any mercy if I don't have any understanding. I don't understand how they can just jump from relationship to relationship. I don't understand why they just do what they do. I just don't understand how people today, you know, uh, when I was, now I learned this in youth ministry because I used to always have people come up to me and say, I don't know how you work with young people. I don't know how you work with young people. They would always follow it up with, because young people just don't want to listen. Anybody ever heard that? Young people just don't want to listen. That is the most untrue statement ever uttered. That young people don't want to listen. All they do is listen. Listen. 